Hi, I'm Daniel and in this video I will show you how to do advanced channel synchronization in SolidCAN 2016. So the part that you can see in front of yourself is the part that where I have defined some of the operations which is only necessary to show you this feature. Now I'll just very quickly jump to my setup and what we have in front of ourselves is the Milton machine that has the upper turret with a B axis, lower rotary turret together with the main and back spindle. Now before I just jump to the channel synchronization, I would like to show you what kind of operations we actually have. So the first one is the face turning on the main spindle done with the upper turret. Then we have the outside diameter turning with the lower turret, some of the drill holes done with the upper turret, and then the center drill in an internal diameter turning done with the lower turret. Now all those selected operations represent the operation that is done on the first side of the part. After this, we have a part transfer where the part from the main spindle will be transferred to the back spindle where we have two additional operations, uh, simple turning with the lower turret. Now, to go to the channel synchronization, what you have to do is to go a uh, right click on the setup and go channel synchronization. Or you can also do it in the, in the ribbon of the SOLIDWORKS under the SOLIDCAM operations tab, channel synchronization. So what we have here in front of ourselves is um, is the sim I'm calling it simple channel synchronization, where the we can see the two channels. Uh, the first channel it's all operations what is done with upper turret, and second channel it's all operations what is done with the lower turret. Now I'll just very quickly just jump to the machine simulation. And what we have over here, I'll just go to my front view. Uh, I'll show you what operations actually we have defined. So, like I said, we have the face turning, we have outside diameter turning. I'll just speed up a little bit. Then we have some drilling, uh, in center drill, internal turning, and then we have the part transfer. And at the end, we have two turning operations done on the back. Spindle. Now the goal of the this video is to show you actually advanced channel synchronization. When I say that, what I mean is um, it's showing you how to correctly use the channel synchronization manager in order to overlap some of the operation that is done on the upper turret, with the lower turret, done on the main and back spindle at the same time. So for example, uh, we have one operation that is done with the upper turret working on the main spindle and we can have also some of the operation done with the lower turret done on the back spindle. So those two operations physically can do uh, can be done in uh, simultaneously on this machine. So the, the, the goal of using channel synchronization and I will say advanced channel synchronization is to uh, dramatically reduce the cycle time per part and increase the efficiency of, uh, of um, the usage of your turrets. So, uh, like I said, the, 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 with this example, one part is done on the main spindle. Uh, it is reasonable that second part needs to be also available on the back spindle together with the stock that follows it in order to perform this cutting. So let me show you how we can uh, make this, how to say, uh, uh, um, continuous cycle um, cutting on this machine. I'll just exit from the machine simulation and the channel synchronization will pop up. Now to make advanced channel, channel synchronization what you need actually to add a new workpiece as I said before. Now to add a new workpiece it's not available if we don't have a part release. The part release is very necessary in channel synchronization, which is the indicator where the part is actually done on the back spindle. 
So I'll just exit over here and I'll create one machine control operation. I'll add my back spindle and over here I will use my clamp in order to release a stock. So after this operation the part will be released from the back spindle which will be an indicator okay the, 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 the part is released also it can mean that um, that we have the part catcher so whatever element you can imagine so I'll just put here release stock just in order to recognize it better in the channel synchronization I'll now set an exit and go back to my channel synchronization now as you can note clicking on any of the operations in the in the, in the channel synchronization manager the add a new workpiece function is actually available now you might ask where we should apply this feature now there's a practice that clicking on the very first operation after the part transfer can be a good position where you can make a, 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 and add a new workpiece but you can be very flexible with this and click on any but in this video I'll just use the very first operation after the part transfer. Now before I click on that I would like to explain you what will uh, happen in the in the in the uh, in the few seconds. So the first just imagine that those two channels represent the two papers and the face turning on the back spin will represent the, the, the position and the marker where those two papers will be cut off. Now after I click on this imagine that the scissor is cutting those two papers in the market area and all operations what was on the lower part of the channel synchronization will go up and all operations that was done on the upper side of the channel synchronization will go down. So I'll click on that and I'll add a new work piece. As you can note the following happened. Now the setup, the machine setup, represented the dynamic element in the channel synchronization in order to load the workpiece, stock and the picture in machine simulation. Therefore the machine setup needs to always be at the first place. So you can always after this um, move adding the new workpiece you should first move the setup to be on the first place. Now together with the setup and the face turning I would not like to those two things start together. So just click on the second uh, channel in the very first operation and I'll click on the setup with a con holding the control key and I'll click to synchronize start to end. Those two things will be then split. It. As you can see I'm now able to make a simulation. So let's see what is the result of the following, following channel synchronization. So let me go to the front view and I'll fit it. So what we have is the very first element is the setup and like I said after this two stocks and the work pieces will be presented. Now on the main spindle we can see the full work piece let me just uh, make it transparent. We can see the workpiece with the full stock. On the right side of the spindle, on the back spindle, we can see the, 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 the workpiece together with a stock where the first uh, half of the part is already done. Now we'll just run the simulation. As you can see here, we can already know that we have the face turning on the back spindle. Then we have outside turning, then we have the safety, and then we have some operation done on the main spindle. And the very last thing is the part transfer, I'll just jump on that. And this represents the first step towards the advanced channel synchronization. As you can see we have the continuous motion and the continuous cycle of the cutting of the part. Now the, the, the goal uh, is to reduce the cutting time and in order to reduce the cutting time we need to make some operations to do our overlap. So let's, I'll just exit from the simulation 
And what I can see here is that I have the face turning on the main spindle, which actually can be done in parallel with the face turning on the back spindle because they share different spindles as well the tarts. So the in order how to make those two synchronize it, I can just remove this label or either I can just use drag and drop and I can put it on the label too. Now I can use the undo button and I can go right click and delete synchronization. The both will do the same. Now let's see what is the end result. I'll go to the front view. And the very first thing what you can note here is that our face turning on main spindle it's simultaneously done with the face turning on the back spindle. So you can see it in this case. So I'll just run, run it a little bit slower. And it's done. Now of course, this is just a letter about how we can uh, make things uh, more, uh, how to say, uh, more faster in the machine. So let me just exit again and try to optimize the, the uh, synchronization, optimize operations more. Now what I have over here is a simple upper turret running operations done on the main spindle and I would like to uh, uh, to make advanced channel synchronization and to move it towards the label number two. But as you can see, the, the, the intelligence in the channel synchronization, it's, 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 uh, it's implemented and therefore this move is not possible because the very simple reason that the, the operation that we have here, it's outside diameter turning on the main spindle, which is over here, cannot be executed before uh, as it is done and defined in the uh, in the cam uh, in the cam tree, so this operation cannot be done before actually this operation itself. Now, if I try to synchronize it in the in the label three again here, you will know that simulation is not possible. And I can go to my clash view, and I can click over here. And you will see that the CMC axis over here is used. Therefore, it cannot work simultaneously. I can do an undo button. And the following few steps is uh, what you can do in order to make uh, channel synchronization uh, more efficient and reduce the cycle time. So over here I have the, the outside diameter turning done on the main spindle. If I move this operation to my upper turret, I will be able to run it together to get with the lower turret. So let me do that. I'll just save and exit. And I'll just jump to the second operation, which is done with the lower turret. And the only thing what I have to do is I would like to use the upper turret on main and just select a different tool. I'll just save and calculate. And you can note that only this operation is calculated, where which actually affects to the all, all the rest. So I can use this save and calculate with all related operations. I really like this feature. All operations is now calculated well. Let me now go back to the our channel synchronization. And now you can note that the operation that was outside diameter turning on the main spindle that was done on the second channel it's actually now done with the upper channel. Therefore, this operation can simultaneously now be done with those two operations. And nevertheless, now I'm also possible actually to move my drilling operation to the same label. With this, we dramatically save our total machining time. And I can go to the simulation, machine simulation, and let's see the result. Let me go to the front view. I'll just reduce the speed and run it. We can see the two turning operations, face turning, outside diameter turning is done at the same time. At the end we can also see the 
drilling operation is done, tensor drilling, repart, transfer. And this is the continuous cycle uh, that it's performing on the mill turn, increasing the efficiency of your machine. I hope you like this video. See you in the next time. For any question, please contact SolidCam support on solidcam.com, clicking on the live help button.